arm floaties will protect my child. Not true, because those arm floaties can pop or slide off or deflate, and they do not keep a child's head above water in case of trouble. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends a Coast Guard-approved life vest. These are unlike the floaties because they're not blown up, they can't pop, they can't get destroyed as easily. Fact or fiction, if my child gets into trouble in the pool, I'll hear the splashing and struggling in time to help. Not true. Drowning is often a silent struggle and can happen in seconds. That's why it's important to have a designated water watcher who isn't distracted by a cell phone. They need to not be distracted. They need to have one job and one job only, and that is keeping an eye on the safety of kids who are swimming. The American Academy of Pediatrics recently updated their guidelines and now recommends that children start learning to swim around the age of one. That's three years earlier than this prestigious group previously advised. Back to you. Boy, that's something we didn't have to worry about, the cell phones. That's one way to rip the phone out of your kit. You can't bring a yeah. cell phone in the water. Yeah, but all of our parents are like smoking cigarettes off on the side and, you know, <laughs> talking about how much they hated their husbands. So come on. <laughs> that's just a baby boomer thing we that have. That is a myth. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, how are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Most of the pools in our area yeah. okay, too, but we do yeah. have that severe thunderstorm warning right now in Montgomery County. I'm sorry, into Prince George's County and Anne Arundel County. We're tracking that storm right now. Let's show it to you and show you where these are in Storm Team 4 radar. You can see that yellow box now in uh, encompassing parts of northern Prince George's as well as northern Anne Arundel County, including areas like Crofton, Odenton, over towards the Annapolis area. Uh, even through the district, we're seeing some of that rain. Now, also some storms. Leesburg, you already got hit by one storm. You got another one right over you. A couple more storms, one moving across 66 and towards Prince William County and then also right on through uh, the D.C. metro area. Seeing this right along the Beltway. This is the heaviest storm right over Bowie. Now, Bowie, I know we have a fireworks display tonight. This should move out in time to get that done. Uh, so that's some good news. But again, that severe thunderstorm warning going until 615 tonight. Heads up if you live along, along Route 50. That's the area seeing the heaviest. And then down to the south, uh, down around the Washington, D.C. metro area or in through the city, actually, uh, in through Sea Pleasant, over towards Chevrolet, right on down towards uh, the Bladensburg area, back towards Bailey's Crossroad in Alexandria. Some heavy rain there as well. And then you can see what's happening uh, up toward the north. And when I say the north, I mean, look at some storms now into Pennsylvania. Some of these are on the stronger side, too. These will move into our northern zones over the next couple of hours. Now, this is going to be the scenario again tomorrow. Rather unsettled, hot and humid, unsettled, just like we saw last week in Amelia. Tomorrow, just like today, any of those storms could be strong, possibly severe again. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Here are the impacts for tomorrow, and really, these are the impacts right on through Sunday, including the same time period for the biggest threat of severe weather. Between 3 and 9 p.m., the greatest concern with any thunderstorms, again, not just tomorrow, but on into the weekend, is going to be some very heavy rainfall, followed by some strong, gusty, damaging winds out there. Next up, maybe we could see some small hail, but again, the biggest concern with any thunderstorms with the heat and humidity back in full force is going to be some heavy rain that could lead to some flooding concerns. So if you're traveling tomorrow, the earlier you can leave, the better with those thunderstorms firing during the mid afternoon hours and then continuing on into the evening hours. So that's your travel impact. If you're heading to the Rolling Stones out at FedEx Field, you definitely want to bring a poncho, which you can bring in. They also mm -hmm. sell them there just in case you are impacted by one of these thunderstorms. A 60% chance, by the way, that you are dealing with rain tomorrow area wide. If you're heading to the Nats game, we could certainly see a delay. I can't even rule out a postponement tomorrow, so you do want to be prepared for that. Basically, you have to be weather ready tomorrow right on into the holiday weekend. Here's a check of your 4th of July planner. We start off the 4th feeling like summer, 74 degrees. It's muggy out there. We have hazy sunshine by lunchtime. It's still dry, so setting up the barbecue is not going to be a problem with temperatures near 90, a high of 90 on the 4th. But once again, we have more scattered showers and thunderstorms between about 3 and 9 p.m. So it's going to be better to leave tomorrow morning versus later in the day. Yes, we have storms through Sunday, Doug, but no one day is a washout. What you need to be is weather ready, be able to move yeah. indoors, have the NBC Washington app, and we're also talking about heat indices near 100 many days, too, with the high humidity levels. Yeah, we saw it today. I definitely think we'll get there again tomorrow. Take a look at this. Let me step out of the way here. Look what we got right here. Nice little rainbow we got going on right here. Ah, as the rain oh, has now pretty. stopped. You know, we're going to see this again during the day tomorrow. Once again, we'll see some...